everybody, welcome back to our English grammar lessons. So, today we are going to talk about the if clauses, okay? The if clauses are used in English, as in any other language, to express uh, hypotheses, basically. To express real conditions or possible conditions or eventually also impossible conditions. This is why they are formed in different ways and they are divided into three groups, into three types, okay? Type 1 for real condition, type 2 for possible condition and type 3 for impossible condition. So, the, um, the, the, the verb, the tenses we're going to use for each one of these types are absolutely um, very rigid in English, okay? We can't choose one tense or another. Uh, we can in other languages, in Italian, for example, for the type 1, we can change, we can choose different tenses. In English, we can't, okay? We have those specific tenses, okay? And those tenses change from one type to the other, okay, in a very regular way. So when we understand the mechanism we have to follow, we won't make mistakes anymore. So let's see what we're talking about. First of all, type 1, real conditions, so something that can really happen in life, okay? An example, very simple actually, if you study you will pass the exam. This is something that can happen. We hope it happens, actually, okay? So, we have the first clause, which is the if clause, in which you can find a simple present if you study. And then we have the main clause, in which we find a future tense with will, okay? We can't change the tenses. This is the only way we can express the sentence, okay? The only correct way, anyway. We can also switch the two clauses. We can say you will pass the exam if you study, okay? Doesn't really matter, okay? If you put them uh, in, in this way or the other way around, okay? It doesn't change anything, okay? Because the clause, the if clause will, have, will always have uh, a simple present and the main clause will always have a future with will. When, when we, 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 we shift okay, to type 2, so possible conditions, something that may happen, okay, but it isn't so sure, so we can say, we have to say, if you studied, okay, eventually, if you studied, you would pass the exam. In this case, if you think about this, uh, each one of our tenses have some sort of, they take a step back, okay? The simple present becomes a simple past. Just chronologically, it is a step back, present to past, okay? I, I also wrote that step back, okay? Because we have to go back, okay? One level back. Same goes for the main clause. Will pass, which is a future, becomes would pass, which is a present conditional. The way we form the present conditional is with would, which is the past form of will, plus the infinitive, which is the same. So also in this case, okay, to get a present conditional from a future, we have to take a step back because would is a step back compared to will. It is the past form of will. Okay? So both verbs basically, okay, have to go back one level, okay, in the so-called it's a Latin word consecutio temporum, okay, which means chronological order basically. All right? So, simple present and then future uh, become simple past and present conditional. Okay, both of them take a step back. Same goes, okay, when we shift from the type 2 to type 3. So, impossible conditions. When are we talking about an impossible condition? When something could have happened in the past, but it didn't. So, it isn't possible anymore. It's past, okay? didn't go that way, so we can change it, <laughs> okay, so it is impossible now. So, back to our example, if you had studied, you would have passed the exam, but you didn't, okay, and so you didn't pass, you didn't pass the exam, so this is impossible now. 
Also in this case, we have to take a step back. Again, you follow my arrow here, step back. So from simple past to the past perfect, pay attention because a very common mistake is um, about using here the present perfect. Present perfect isn't a step back compared to simple past. They are on the same level, okay? We've talked about them a lot in my previous videos. They are just on the same chronological level. You choose, you pick one or the other depending on the context of the sentence. Okay, if the action is concluded, it's finished, then you use the simple past. Whether it isn't finished or eventually it is finished, but consequences are express, expressed here in the present, so you use the uh, present perfect, but they are absolutely on the same level. To go back in time, you have to use the, the, sorry, the past perfect. How can you form the, the past perfect? It's, very, it's absolutely similar to the present perfect. You just, just have to use the simple past of the auxiliary verb have. So it isn't have started, but had started. It's incredibly sim simple, actually. No? So past perfect, which is a step back, okay, compared to simple past. And the same goes for present conditional that becomes past conditional, obviously. The, the name says it all, okay? From present conditional to past conditional, it is obviously uh, one level back, okay? Backwards. How can we form the past conditional? We use would again, because obviously uh, would is always used in order to form conditionals, uh, but the infinitive will change here, okay? It becomes a past infinitive. So in this case, okay, would is the same because it can't change actually, and the verb which will actually take that step back in order to form the past conditional is the infinitive. The tense that changes is the infinitive, okay? From a uh, present infinitive, past, okay? A base form actually because it's infinitive without to. Uh, uh, to, okay, a uh, past infinitive, okay, which is formed by the auxiliary have and the past participle. Just a quick reminder, reminder okay, the past participle is formed uh, adding ed to the base form for regular verbs and for irregular verbs you have to pick the third form of, of, the, of the tab of irregular verbs, obviously. So, also in this case, okay, you, you follow my arrows, step back from present conditional to past conditional in order to do so. You can't change would, it's, it would remain the same, but you change the infinitive, okay, from a present infinitive to a past infinitive, okay? So, um, just another, uh, another little detail I can add is that uh, you uh, can't just use would to form the conditional, but also other, mm, for example, modal verbs like could, okay, like should, for example, but the, the tense is obviously absolutely the same, okay? Uh, I don't know, I can make an example. Um, uh, if, uh, um, if it was sunny, okay, if it was sunny outside, you should go to, to the seaside, okay? You should go, okay? It's, a, it's, a, it's healthy, it's, a, it's, a, it's good, it's fun to go, okay? You should go. Or you could go, okay? So, uh, it's a, the first one is a sort of an advice, the second is a, a possibility, okay? So you can also change and uh, instead of using would, you can use should or you can use could, okay? You can also use might if you prefer. They are all conditional forms of modal verbs. Then, another last, last thing actually, um, can we mix, okay, the different types together? Sometimes we can. Uh, okay, let's imagine, for example, that you're having your exam now, I'm your teacher, and I tell you, if you had studied type 3, okay, you haven't, so this is impossible, it's impossible condition, okay? If you had studied before, you would know the answer now, so type 2. 
In this case, I used uh, for the first part, part for the if clause, if you add studied a type 3, so a past perfect, and you would know the answer, okay, you would know the answer now, so it's type 2 and it's a present conditional. This, or I, I could also say uh, you could answer now, okay, in this case I'm using a modal verb. So, there, there could be also mixed forms, okay, but they are probably a little more difficult if you <laughs> just think about this um, sort of a uh, fixed structure, okay, you will never make mistakes again. So just remember, okay, for the type 1, uh, the if clause, simple present, main clause, future. Then type 2, take a step back, so if clause with simple past and main clause with present conditional. Then type 3, it's impossible, impossible condition, so step back again, uh, if clause with past, past perfect and main clause with past conditional. So, this is a very short resume, but I hope it is uh, uh, useful for you to understand, okay? And uh, if you have any questions or any doubts, please just leave me a comment below and I will be absolutely glad to answer. I will be also absolutely glad to uh, read your request and to talk about the topics that you consider more tricky or maybe you have some doubts or maybe they are useful for you, you have exams or whatever, I'm just here for you, okay? So thank you very much, if you uh, like, if you enjoy my videos, please subscribe my channel, okay? And see you very soon again with English grammar lessons. Goodbye!